Corey, thank you so much for being uh, with me today. I'm excited to have you, man. And uh, as I told you uh, on the phone, um, I've been leaning into this Medicare Minister brand now for about a year and just really decided to take it seriously and just feel that one of my callings is really just to inspire and motivate and encourage people. And one of the things that I really wanted to do with this channel was to interview top leaders in different industries, not only in the insurance space, which I'm in, but also, uh, you know, other leaders that, that have been successful in other industries, just because I think some people think that success is this mystery, but it's so interesting that so many people across so many different industries all are saying the same thing. They're preaching the same thing. And so um, I just want to take a moment here and uh, obviously welcome you once again. Thank you for being with me today. And just want to see if you'll tell me, tell the, the audience a little bit about yourself, kind of your background, your bio real quickly, and then we'll just dive in from there. Yeah, man, absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, so I pretty much created um, just a completely different mindset in the home-based business in industry. Uh, we call this profession the network marketing profession or- sure. Um, multi-level marketing profession. So uh, I'm 30 years old from Columbus, Mississippi, married to my high school sweetheart. We have two great, amazing children together. And uh, man, it's just been amazing the last six years, just um, uh, just living a life, man, that um, that we most definitely envision. And, um, you know, we're most definitely still writing the vision for, for our future. Gotcha. Gotcha. So tell me a little bit about kind of just leading up before you got successful and before all the dots connected, if you will. Um, I know we've known each other for se several years now, and obviously you're involved in ministry and, and I've been involved in ministry. And I'm a church planner, pastor, which you're very fam uh, familiar with. But before that, before really it just kind of really happened for you, I know a little bit of your story, but can you kind of go back and tell some of those bumps and some of those challenges? Because I think you would agree that it really helped fuel who you are today. Absolutely. So, you know, it's funny you just said that. So we've I've been in ministry since I was 17 years old. Wow. And um, yeah, man. So that's we're talking what's that 13 years. So yeah. 13 years I've been in ministry. And uh, so I grew up in a in a very, very spiritual family. And um, basically things changed for me because once I graduated high school and got out on my, on my own, right. I love, I love to, to say it like this. I didn't, I could no longer live off the prayers of my grandmother. It was time for me to go out there and experience life for myself. Sure. And uh, man, at the, age, at the age of 21, uh, I made probably one of the, the, the craziest mistakes that changed my life. Uh, I committed a felony that uh that sent my life in a whirlwind during that okay. particular time and um I, it was just amazing man because it was during that time you know we didn't have a bunch of money i couldn't go and get a you know a regular job or anything right um my wife and i we transitioned into evangelism and i can remember uh probably one of the one of the moments that changed everything for me i was invited to speak at a church in dallas texas we it was we got out there in a hope and a prayer you know, spent the last that we had on, in gas and hotel and food only to get back to Columbus, Mississippi uh, to have a hundred dollar check. Oh, and um, <laughs> yeah, man, a hundred dollar check and the gas was doing in, in our home and it was cold. We ended up going to go stay with a friend of mine's and um, and um, because we didn't have enough money to for heat. Um, my, my friend ended up, you know, some things changed and we went back home and all of us slept in this one bedroom uh, with the with the with the heater on and the bathroom was right there. So if we stepped out of our bedroom to go to the restroom. We were literally freezing cold. Um, so it, it was those moments that began to change because my wife started to change. You know, women like security. Right. Women like security. So things started to change for her. She she realized that we were more than the people that that um that then honestly we, we were more than what we had accepted. Right. You know, if you can say it like that. Yeah. And uh, she just came to me and she said, listen, I didn't get married to live like this. This is, there's got to be more than life than, right. than this. You're a better man than this. I married you. 
um, uh, you know, in spite of everything that we were going through, because I knew uh, what God had for us and we're living way less than, than, than who God has created us to be. And that was pretty much where things began to change for us. So real quickly, I just want to dive into that just for a second. So you had a little bit of adversity. You talked about the felony. I mean, was there something that uh, initially it just kind of maybe paralyzed you a little bit and you just kind of thought maybe it's over, but then through the talk with your wife, like you just said, she came to you and it just kind of woke something up in you or can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was, um, man, it was, it's, she, she put a mirror to my face. Yeah. I literally, I, I thought that it was, I literally thought it was over. Right. Literally. Like it was, it was, we had nothing. Right. We had nothing. We had no way. And my wife, she got up one morning and she was, she said she was going to go to the mall. And it was the craziest thing I could have ever, ever heard. Cause I'm like, we were just complaining about not, not having any money. What are you going to the mall for? You don't have right. any <laughs> Right. You know, like, what, what are you talking about going to the mall? Well, anyway, we, I, I'm like, I want to go with you. And of course, men, for the men out there, for the women out there too, women, we can't read your mind. Yeah, right? yeah, that's so, right. <laughs> you know, I didn't know that she just wanted to be alone and have some alone time. Right. Um, anyway, I went to the mall with her and she turns to me and she, she just told me, she said, you know, uh, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Something's got to change. Wow, and that was great. kind of the, for her to have that mirror in my face, because I thought I was doing a great job as a man of God. Right. You know, I thought I was, I was, I was serving the faith and uh, I thought everything was okay when really um, we were really broken. And that was kind right. of the breaking point for us where, um, where I knew that, you know, outside of having God, the things that I'm praying for, God isn't my genie. He's not my genie, sure. I, you know, he's giving me everything that I need. I've got to get up and go to work for the yeah, things that I'm most definitely exactly. So what's interesting is you said something there. I just want to dive into it real quick. And I do have some questions, but I feel like, you know, we, we need to explore this a little bit more. Why do you think that it is, and not only Christians, but non-Christians, I know we're, we're talking a lot about faith here, but why do you think so many people live beneath what they were created for? Can you talk about that just for a second? Yeah. So I think, I think typically, I think sometimes people, uh, you know, we hear this a lot where people, people talk about the product of your environment. Sure. I think that's true. I think, um, I think a person being a product of their environment is one big factor. Another thing is I believe that um, I've got this thing that I've said for a very long time that I believe we become the sum total of our experiences. Right. If we're not careful, if we're if we're not constantly growing our mind, if we're not constantly uh, seeking for for more, we'll we'll become to we'll begin to settle. And what uh, we call it settling, right? To be completely honest, we begin to live a normal life that mm-hmm. everyone else around us is right. living. Right. And I think I think that's the I think that's the biggest thing. Most people, it's the lack of exposure. Yeah, I was in, I was downtown Greenville, uh, South Carolina, just a few weeks ago, and I'm looking out over you know downtown. This I mean beautiful, amazing hotel, and we're on the top floor, and I'm looking out the window, and um, I stood there at the window for probably five minutes without saying a single word. My cousin was with me, and I turned around and I looked at her and I said, I said, travel changed my life. Yeah, and it's because I'm from Macon, Mississippi. I grew up with, right. I mean, seriously, right. I'm from Macon, Mississippi, yeah. where I grew up, you know, I don't know a lot of success. I, I mean, yeah. I can't, I can't count on one hand, the, the number of people that are, we don't have, we don't have tall buildings. We don't have, <laughs> you know, yeah, like I know what you're saying. Right. Yeah. It's a total of, yeah. of probably 10 stop signs in the entire city. Yeah. So for me, as I begin to, to venture out and do more, my exposure um heightened you know i began to to dream more i began yeah. to see more you know i didn't want a a buick anymore which is in making that's probably a luxury, luxury right right you get what i mean yeah so it's i think it's a it's a, it's a combination of all of that it's the lack of exposure sure. it's the lack of um uh the conducive environment to yeah. a person you know um uh, having things that that makes them want to dream big and 
have a bigger vision. So I think that's one of the biggest things that cause people to settle. Sure. Uh, they don't have the, they're not surrounded by the necessary environment. And of course, this is going to lead to personal development. I already know it. Right. Um, but yeah, but that's, that's the biggest thing. There sure. So situation challenges have the felony situation, have this conversation with your wife. What happens after that? Do you begin to on, on this journey searching or because I know that you've been very successful in the home based arena. So tell me how you got to that point from the conversation with your wife. So actually, it started, we were a part of a, a travel club okay. during that particular time. We actually, okay. we use this, we use these services actually um, in our evangelism ministry to, to save on hotels and, okay. and things of that nature. So basically, um, I think my wife had actually been talking to the lady who sponsored us about potentially getting me into the business opportunity to go to one of the trainings. I really right. do still to this day, still to this day, I believe that. She haven't admitted it, but I think that's what <laughs> happened. Right. I think she was behind my back telling everyone else how sorry right. I was. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, I went to this training event and this training event, um, I began to see just normal people on stage right. having success in this particular business. And I'm like, man, if these people were doing this, I can do it. You know, so I went to a training event and, and, you know, it, it was, that's pretty much where this whole journey of the home-based business deal started. It started there at that training. And I saw just like what I'm talking about, I began yeah. to see something else that was possible through this vehicle. Right. And I, it started with belief. I was able to believe that, Hey, if these people can do it, what make them better than me? I can right. most of them do it as well. Right. And so tell everybody, you know, how successful you did become in that company. Cause I think it plays an important part from where you came from, from the wanting a Buick and making Mississippi, you know, and, and, and having some challenges, but now you rose in the ranks pretty high in this particular company, correct? Yeah. So pretty much within a, within a year's time, we actually earned in the top 2% wow. of the entire company. Okay. Um, you know, so I do this training right now in the industry, whether it's with other network marketing teams or my teams, people who's a part of the company that I'm a part of now, but, uh, that training, I, mean, I just, I literally share with people that, uh, if, if you're willing to put in the work, you can most definitely change your life. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can lapse time. Um, if I can use that particular word, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can lapse time, um, by most definitely putting in some serious work. And it was, it was really hard work. It was right. Some, some sacrifices and, sure. and commitment and, you know, for the people who's watching this is that's that potentially think that, you know, you hearing a person say this, I didn't sit back and wait on someone else to change it for me. That's you know, good. I yeah. went out there and I put in hours. I mean, I grinded hours and hours and hours and days and days and days, you know, for, for us to, I mean, it was, it was nice. My wife didn't see me. There were sure. birthday parties that I missed. There were there were holiday events. There were things that I literally uh, missed out on that my family was willing to sacrifice yeah. in order to do something different. I had a mentor just tell me uh, years ago. He said, "Corey, if you're willing to do today, today what others won't, you can live a life that others don't." Right. You know, That's and I, I took that. I took that, um, and 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 I was able to to grow on that and, and embody that particular statement. And now here it is, you know, five, six years later, we're able to do the things that we want to do whenever we want to do it, you know, from those sacrifices that was made, you know, years ago. Sure. And that's interesting that you say that because I think a lot of times when people hear these success stories, it's more than just believing it, right. And dreaming it, there's gotta be some action, behind it. So I love that you said it, it took work, you had to put in some hours, you had to hustle, you had to grind, so to speak. And so what, what, what was your why, Corey? Like what, what drove you to do that? I know you and your family were on the same page with that. But what was really your why behind all that, if you don't mind sharing that? Yeah, so I mean, that's, I really man, I had, I had something to prove. Yeah. Like for me, I didn't, I didn't, during this time, it's really different for, for most people. Most people when they are when they are going, when they commit and say, you know what, I'm going to go after my dreams. Most people, they feel like they have a lot to lose. Right. It was different for me. I didn't have yeah. anything to lose. My name 
was tarnished right. because of the, the mistake that I made at 21 years old. So yeah. it was people that knew me in ministry from 17 to 21 that thought the world of me. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, okay, what's up with this guy? You right. get what I mean? Sure. I mean, it's my, my wife, she's got this crazy story where she's in the barbershop getting, 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 getting her hair done. And, you know, the press, relief the press release comes on the news talking about me. And the people, other barbers and beauticians are talking about me, making jokes on me while she's in the hair, we in the chair, weeping and crying, wow. getting her hair done. Yeah. So it was those things like that. You know, the, the greatest acronym of, of what's your why is what hurt you. You get what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's good. So yeah. for me, it wasn't about the money. It was about rebuilding my name rebuilding my brand. What can I do? What can I become? You know, all the money was great, you know, but it's the, uh, it's still great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, right. But it's the, it's the fact that when people look at me now, it's an, I've completely erased the past of who I was. So it was, it was, a, it was, just, that was it. It was me proving to people uh, that I can still be valuable in spite of everything that, you know, in spite of everything that I had actually done uh, to potentially ruin, you know, my name. Well, what's interesting about that is you could have let something like that stop you. And we all know this, even in faith and, and even in non-faith, a lot of times our mess from yesterday can keep us from the mission that God has for us today. So why didn't you let it? I know you talked about the name, but um, you could have let it, you could have made an excuse. You could have said, no, you know, success is not for me. I don't deserve this, but there was something in you that just said, you know what, I got something to prove and I can make something happen. And I'm willing to put in the hustle to do that. And so I, I, I think that's, that's a really neat thing because I think a lot of people, they would have just, and we see it all the time, right. In all industries, we see people make say, all you know what, I'm, I'm, you know, well, this happened, I, I'm doomed, I'm damaged goods. And and real quickly, before we leave this part, and I got some questions for you. Um, a lot of times, um, people think that just because you have a breakthrough, that that mess from yesterday still doesn't try to talk to you, right? That you that, you know, and of course, we know this, our adversary in the faith is, is the devil, right? He wants to bring up your mess in your past. But even if you're not a Christian and watching this, the mess from yesterday sometimes can be crippling. Sometimes those voices speak to you and go, yeah, you think you've made something of yourself. What is something or some things, what are some practices that you have done to kind of just tell those negative voices or anything that would try to creep up and say, no, this is where I'm at. I know I deserve this. I, I know I'm moving forward. Can you just share some practical tips that you've used? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really quick, I, I want to share, I just want to be as transparent as sure. possible. I most definitely want to share this. So for me, um, over the years, I've developed such a strong mentality and a strong understanding of who I am, yeah. uh, who God, number one, yeah. and uh, just who I am to myself. When I look sure. at myself, I don't see that person anymore. All right. That's good. So I never, I never struggle with my past. Okay. I actually struggle more with success than anything. Okay, that's good. So for me, it's the it's that when I wake up in the morning, it's 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 success that's taunting me. Like, hey, you guys can get up and go do this. You really don't have to work today. Yeah, you get what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. for me, for me, that's that's more of my struggle. You know, um, uh, finding a way to remind myself that, hey, you've got a reason to work. So right. right now, you know, right now, I'll tell you one of the disciplines, one of the practices sure. that my wife and I, we're in the process of doing right now. We're creating a vision board, a brand okay. new vision board. Okay, gotcha. The reason why, you know, the mind go to work for what you put in it, yeah. right? So most sure. of the reason why you see people who who's not doing anything or they're doing the same thing that everyone else has done is because that's what they've seen, right? right? So- right. And we covered this earlier. So for me, us creating a vision board, it's not about the stuff. It's about the people. It's about the person that I become on the way to the stuff, mm. right? So if yeah, I put on my good. vision board a house that's $2 million, imagine the income that I've got to make to, right. to buy a house that's $2 million. Right. Let's break it down even more. Imagine the impact that I've got to cause to create the income 
to buy a house that's $2 million. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So that's good. It's, it's, my disciplines is number one, I want to create a vision. I want to create this vision board to give my mind something to work to work towards. And then on top of that, what are the mentalities? What are the disciplines that I've got to learn? That's where personal development comes in. Uh, what is it that I've got to learn? What do I need to study from the wealthy? What is it that I need to study from other people who are successful consi consistently? Because success isn't, it's not a destination. It's a direction. Right. Right. That's the biggest thing. Most people think that when you're successful, you've reached your destination. No, right. it's a constant direction. You're on the road to continue success because the moment you let your foot off the gas, you're going to start declining. Wow. You know, yeah. so me knowing that, you know, every single day, I mean, at least at the minimum of two hours per day, I'm immersing myself in some type of personal development. It could be two, three in the morning. My wife wakes up and she's like, why are you not sleep? And it's because I'm reading. That's when right. my house is the quietest. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this, these are my practices every single day. When we're on the plane, when we're on road trips, uh, traveling here and there, while my while my kids are in the back keeping up fuss and my wife's watching a movie, I've got my AirPods in listening to Jim Rohn. No. Or you get what I mean? Like this yeah. is some stuff that I do every single day without yeah. taking a day off. So yeah. I'm, I'm constantly a student. Yeah, that, and that's good. I'm, I'm the same way. I wake up early and, or before I go to bed or both, um, I'm pumping that, that content in my mind somehow to keep myself you know, positive. I'm actually reading a book right now called Winning the War in Your Mind by Pastor Greg Rochelle. And it's, it's good stuff, man. And, and that's just people that I mentor and I talk to, I'm always telling them, you know, give me a 90 day challenge and just pump podcast or books or YouTube videos and you'll be changed in 90 days. You'll be surprised how much of that, you know, what uh, Zig Ziglar called the stinking thinking you'll get rid of. Right. And so that's good stuff real quickly. Um, so how did you get to the place where your past didn't bother you anymore? Because I know a lot of people may be watching this. There's some faith-based folks and some non-faith-based folks that we watching this channel um, wh what was it for you that was the breakthrough that you said, I can leave that past behind that's no longer going to imprison me and hold me back? Can you just share maybe some practical things there or when was a breakthrough for you? So it's, it's you know, our focus, our mind is powerful, man. Right. You'd be surprised the moment you start to, to change your mind and really start to grow and develop personally, really what happens is you start to, um, if I take a cup, and this cup is, is full of negativity. Right. And it's, I mean, when I say full of negativity, I mean literally full of negativity. Right. right? So if, if, if I've got a black, if I, let's say if it's full of Coke, I've got a clear glass full of Coke, and this represents my thoughts. I'm thinking about the negative thoughts about myself. If I take some water, I take water, and I begin to pour this water into this, this cup, this clear glass, that's full of Coke before long, the cup is going to be full of water before long, the cup, the water is going to, if I continue to pour, it's going to cause that Coke to spill out. Right. And it's going to be full of, because I am filling the cup with a more substance of water, which represents the positivity that I was right. feeding my mind in. And it was completely erasing the darkness and the negativity. Yeah, so that's good. I begin, I begin to work on me. I began to work, I began to, to see, and once I did that, when I, when I looked at myself, I saw myself different. I began to see myself as God's son who was affirmed. Mm -hmm. I began to see myself as God's son who was loved in spite of, you know, here's the deal. There are some people right now that's probably not even struggling from their past, but they're struggling from their present. Yeah, here's a good. word for you. It's amazing because God actually, God died for the person that we're hiding. That's what I love. He, he died for the person we're hiding. There are people that are, that are physically, you see them and they think they've got it. You'll, you'll think they've got it all together, but in their present right now, they're struggling. There are things that are haunting them every single day. That's the person that God, that it's, it's the, it's the person that that person is hiding that God died for. And when I started to understand God's love, when I started to understand God's intentions for me, his plans for me, and I started to work and study and right. read 
and and believe that's the biggest thing people know this stuff but they don't right. believe it right, right? They, don't, they don't follow it once right. once my body of work started to change off his principles then that's when my ideal uh, of myself started to completely change so i started to look at myself different based off uh me filling that cup or overfilling that cup of negativity with positivity and it, it just it changed the outlook of the cup right yeah and it's interesting how your life changes when you live from a place of approval instead of living from a place of trying to earn your approval every day and i think a lot of people don't don't know how frustrating how tiring and so yeah that that's a good word right there um, so we got a few more minutes left here. Um, I, I want to ask you something. This is kind of putting you on the spot a little bit, but what is one word that you would use to describe yourself? Uh, service. Service. Okay. Service. And so service. So tell me this, how has that word service helped you become successful? Can you share that real quickly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, I think the biggest thing is, it's kind of like what I mentioned earlier. I uh, just did this training uh, this past this past Sunday um, with a team um, that I'm a part of, and I was talking about impact over income. You know, once we find a way to, to serve, to really make an impact, you know, most people, I really feel, I'm still here. That's the biggest thing. Sure. I'm still here. Yeah, I'm I still see. going, right? And it's because I'm more focused on impacting over income. You know, most people is, right. is, is, is butt backwards. Right. Most people the other way around. They're focusing on the income. So when the income doesn't come as quickly as they want it to, they stop. Right. They quit. Right. You know, and right. once those people quit, is is because well the money wasn't there or whatever, and they never get a chance to see the impact. When really, if the goal is here first, if you understand that, hey, I'm got, like Jesus came here to serve. Right. I'm Jesus, like I'm here to model uh, him. And so I've got to figure out how to be a servant. Where, where am I hardwired to serve? Where am I hardwired to be a servant? You know, and when I begin to focus on myself servicing others in those areas, you just mentioned Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar said it like this. He said, if you find a way to help other people, you automatically get what you want. Sure. And that's kind of the thing. It's just, it's, it's backward for most people. Most people are focused on what can I get? What can I get out of this sure. uh, instead of finding a way to serve? So if I could sum up my life for myself, it would most definitely be the word service focusing yeah. on how to impact others. Well, I definitely like that you've combined your faith because a lot of times um, you had taught, we were talking about why so many people in ministry, especially, or just in faith in general, struggle with success and money, thinking that they have to be broke or they buy into this myth. And I, and I was one of those people for several years. And I don't even know how I slowly gravitated into, into that. But why do you think so many people struggle with that? And you were just talking about it was just something for you to comprehend. And then, um, you know, so just continue with that. Yeah, so it's, I've, I've found it very hard to even grasp that. Sadly, you know, um, I want to say this, man, it could potentially be where, especially people in ministry because they're leaders. Right. It could potentially be that those people are just wanting to fit into their congregation. Right. You know, sadly, you sure. know, uh, right. because, I, I mean, and you, you've probably heard if, if, a, if a pastor is a wealthy Right. Maybe he's a great book writer, or maybe he's uh, a great actor, or whatever. I mean, however, this guy's making his money. Right. If the pastor is wealthy, the church people, church people, automatically assume that this guy should be doing something else with his money. Right. He shouldn't be living in that big house. He shouldn't right. have that nice car. Right. You know, whatever. You know. So some people live less than to to kind of stay out of the spotlight. Right. But here's the deal. If you do that and you're lacking financially, how can you really help others? That's a good point. Right? I mean, how can you really help others? How can you really serve others? If money answer it things, then it limits you on the answers or the solutions to the, you know, bro, it's people out there praying for stuff where really the answer is more money. Right. That's good. Yeah. And, and I totally agree. I, 
was talking to somebody today that money is neither good nor bad. It's neutral. It was a tool. It's a resource that we've been given by God to use. And my prayer is always bless me more so I can be a bigger blessing uh, to more people. So that, that's a great point. A couple of things, and then we're going to close today. Um, what is one thing that you think most people wouldn't know about you that they maybe would find kind of humorous? Like you have any kind of, uh, you know, whether it's rolling your tongue, making it into a taco or something like that. Tell us one thing about you that maybe most people wouldn't know about Mr. Corey Lockett. I like to be alone. Okay. That's interesting because you're such a charismatic guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Most people wouldn't think that I I'm, I'm probably at my best when I'm just, to myself reading chilling i mean I, I i get less sleep when it's when it's less people in the house when there's less people around there's something about uh you know most people don't like for for quietness or that's that it's too quiet it's freaking me out i, I love that if i could sit out on a lake for the entire day and just fish to myself uh it's just something about when i'm by myself uh, I don't have the the thoughts, the distractions, the conversations, sure. whatever is, you know, uh, filling another person's mind. Uh, it's just, I find, I find comfort being by myself. Sure. Sure. And, and like I said, in the very beginning, you know, when we created this channel and we started leaning into it, wanting to interview top leaders like yourself, you know, we wanted to give some substance uh, there's a lot of channels out there that are that are pretty much doing the same thing, which is which is okay. But I really just wanted to be honest and real with people and just really get down to the nitty gritty. I, I think that sometimes people think that successful people like yourself aren't real people. Like you're you're somehow an avenger, you know, so to speak, and you have superpowers, and they don't realize that they can be successful in themselves. The main difference is you disciplined yourself. See, I like to say it this way: a lot of people want the delight without the discipline. Right. And a lot of times it takes the discipline, you know, to get to the to the other side of delight. So with that said, as we close today, what is maybe one thing that you would say to someone, maybe one tip, uh, just just one word or however you want to uh, phrase it, that you would give to someone out there, whether they're in the insurance industry like myself, whether in the home based business industry like you or whatever industry, they just they want to make something more of themselves They're they, they, they're looking for that breakthrough or maybe they're just right there, but they're not quite breaking through. What is one word that you would give them to help them to become more successful? Um, I probably say focus. Okay. And the reason why is because people are, people are easily distracted. You know, we're, we're very emotional, emotional people. So it's, it's amazing to me how someone can allow a no to stop their dreams. Yeah. Whether it's a insurance person that's going to a potential customer and the person say, no, I'm not interested. And then that's, that's the, that's the 10th no that week. And they're just like, Oh, I can't do it. Right. When really on the other side of that 10th, no can be that one client that changed everything for them. Right. That can connect them with so many different people, whatever it may be. But I think when you, when you set a goal, when you've got a vision, it's it's a it's a unique thing that a lot of people in this world don't have. But the word focus for a person to be to have tunnel vision yeah. on whatever it is that they're wanting to do, in spite of emotions, in spite of what what their thinking thinking is, in spite of what their what their wife think, what their husband think, when there is something where you know that this can potentially change your life. And you feel like you're gifted, you're called to this particular area, whether it's in the marketplace, within ministry or whatever it is, you know, you don't, you don't need the opinions of other people. You don't need the right. approval from other people. Just focus on, um, focus on the assignment, focus on the admission. So I think focus would be that, yeah. that one word for me. And that's interesting. You say that because of the challenge that you had, that you shared with us today, you, you could have made a choice to focus on that but you chose to focus on where you were going forward. And as a result of that, uh, multiple six-figure earner, right? In, in multiple companies or? 
I, I want to make sure I don't misspeak here. Multiple. No, no, no. So just, just this, just this one company. Just one just company. The, yeah. Yeah. So okay. the one company we actually, our corporation, we were recognized, uh, 2000, 2019 for, uh, becoming seven figure earners. Wow. So seven figure earner, uh, live in Columbus, Mississippi. You, you own actually, um, a, a couple of businesses there in Columbus as well, yep. right? Like brick and mortar businesses, if you will. Uh -huh. So, so focus led you from, you could have focused on that in the past, but you, you had that tunnel vision. You focused on where you wanted to go. You wanted to make an impact, a difference. So seven figure money earner own multiple businesses now. Uh, on Facebook, we see you all the time traveling everywhere. So world traveler, we always see you somewhere traveling. So I definitely think the word focus has really paid off for you. And what's interesting about the traveling is you're always with your family, right? You're taking your family with you, right? And so it's interesting. Once again, could have let that crippled you, could have let that paralyzed you, but you had that tunnel vision you focused, you believed in yourself, you fed your mind full of positivity, you got around the right people. And here you are today. And so um, real quickly, where can people find you? Like, tell us, is there a website, social media? Tell us where we can find you. We'll put that in our video description as well. Sure. So yeah, you can, you know, go to, you could go to the internet and type in CoreyLockett.com. Okay. Find us, find us there, reach out to me, connect, partner, uh, inquire, whatever it is. Um, you can, you can go to our, the page with our corporation, pretty much all of our different multiple streams of incomes are, uh, all in this one site and it's TGI.company. Okay. Uh, so it's TGI.company, which is short for team grind international. Oh, I love and, it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So on Facebook, you can actually go to uh, just simply Corey Lockett and, um, uh, reach out to me on Facebook and uh, I most definitely, uh, most definitely reach back out to you. And I'm really, I'm a really social person. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not the, that's uh, your fishing. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. So it's, it's uh, but I have to be, that's the right. Cool no, thing. I got you. I, yeah. I mean, if I'm going to impact some people in spite of what I would rather do, I mean, I've got to be social. Yeah. My mission is, is a whole lot better than, uh, than my comfort level. Um, so yeah, but social media, if you reach out to me, I'll keep in touch. I'll stay in touch. Uh, I'm not the person that hop on social media just to be on there. It's it's I'm a social person. So right. use yeah. social media for, for what it's worth, for what it's sure. for. Well, listen, man, I appreciate just a few minutes of your time today. It's been Thank great. You, I know when this comes out on our channel, it's going to encourage a lot of people. And uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. You're an encouragement to me. And my, my, I value our friendship and uh, look up to you, man. And, and you've inspired and encouraged me when there were some times in my life where, you know, it seemed like it was a little dark or, or you know, like some, I got a little stale. So I appreciate you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. You're making an impact. Well, thank you, man. Thank you so much. And, and I appreciate you, brother. Have a great weekend and uh, we'll talk soon. Take care, brother. Woo!